Welcome into another video in my series where I'm going through and testing all the weapons inside of Modern Warfare 3 to see just how viable these weapons are for us to be using inside of our Zombies game mode. This is going to include the aftermarket parts, the aftermarket conversion kits, as well as the MW2 weapons. So if you're new around here and you like everything Call of Duty Zombies, make sure you are subscribed with those bell notifications turned on so you're not going to miss out any future uploads from myself. As well, down below in the description you will find the link for my streams. I stream on Mondays and Thursdays, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I stream everything from MW3 zombies to custom zombies and all zombie related games in the in between. Have a ton of fun over there. I would love to see you guys come and hang out. Now in today's video, um, I did mention on the weekend that we were going to announce our uh, Black Ops 6 giveaway on Monday. Now yesterday's video took me a number of days to put together. So if you're looking for everything zombies for Black Ops 6, then check out the video. I have linked down in the description below and it is on screen as well. And that covers absolutely everything for Black Ops 6 Zombies. So as far as our Black Ops 6 giveaway, I will be announcing that tomorrow. So just so you all know, you still have a chance to get in for uh, the draw for Black Ops 6 just by simply leaving a comment and a like down on the video below. So now when we dive into today's video is something I truly love to do. And that is a viewer suggestion from you guys. So down in the comments section, I had a suggestion to go ahead and run the MW2 LMG, the 556 Icarus. So in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at this 556 Icarus LMG from MW2, taking it through all three tiers, taking on bounty contracts all the way through. So hopefully by the end of today's video, you have a good feel for how this weapon performs inside of zombies. And at the end of the video, you should be able to make up your mind on whether or not this LMG is going to be a viable option for you to be running inside of your zombies games. So without further ado, let's get to the 556 Icarus review video today. Welcome into today's video. Thank you so very much for tuning in. Today is something I truly enjoy doing as we get to do a viewer suggestion. So we're gonna be looking at the 556 Icarus LMG from MW2. I've got a camo on there that I think looks really cool. So we're gonna be looking to keep that on the weapon today. Now, if you're new to the channel, when I spawn in and do my weapon testing videos here on this channel, I spawn in and put on all of my perks with no additions to the weapon, so absolutely nothing to increase damage output to the weapon. Aside from being a mouse and keyboard player, I do run Deadshot Daiquiri every single game as I like the bit of extra critical damage it does provide, but that's about it for adding extra damage to the weapon when we spawn in. And then the next thing to do is head off and grab ourselves our bounty contract, our first one inside of tier one. And I wanna go ahead and take on our first bounty contract of the day at just white rarity. So no additions to the weapon whatsoever, just the base weapon uh, and see how it performs against the bounty contract inside of tier one. And you can already tell, like I'm barrel stuffing our bounty contract inside of tier one at white rarity. I was really impressed with how this was performing right off the rip. Um, so I definitely wanted to go off and visit pack a bunch and see if we can increase the damage output on this uh, LMG once and see how much more of a difference this would make, um, you know, to a bounty contract inside of tier one seeing, you know, just how well it performed on our first one. So if you're new to MW3 from Game Pass, melee the pack a bunch machine before you use it or your pack crystals and you'll be able to keep your camo blueprint on your weapon for the rest of the run. Marking contract. So our second contract of inside of tier one we went and picked up uh now we are white rarity no ammo mods and no tools but we do have pack a bunch on the lmg so we went and picked up our second bounty contract inside of tier one and we took on our second mangler today and i could already tell that this was doing just an immense damage increase just by visiting pack a bunch we almost finished him off where he stood and then I just had to move out from the Riff Raff and I was able to definitely easily deal with that bounty contract inside of tier one only being pack-a-punched. So at this point, um, I just wanted to say thank you for the suggestion. This has been a ton of fun to run so far. And at this point, I was really intrigued to see how well this was going to perform as we progress through uh, the match and increase the weapons output damage and increase the bounty difficulty that we're taking on. So it was time to throw on my legendary tool, my Shatter Blast, and head off and grab our third uh, bounty contract inside of tier one. The last one we're gonna be doing today, and it was our third Mangler, and you can see just how easy that was 
to deal with that bounty contract and set a tier one. We got a schematic that I was hoping to hand off to another player today, but I'll be honest, um, I have had really, really poor luck trying to hand out schematics recently um, to players as uh, you'll see if you stick through to the end of the video to find out uh, what happened at Xville and why I was unable to hand off the schematic to another player. So seeing how it performed inside of tier one across the three bounty contracts that we had, I wanted to keep the damage output where it was. So we're pack one legendary with an ammo mod on it. And I wanted to head off into tier two, grab a bounty contract, which we did. And we got a mimic up here at the legacy fortress area. And um, I was impressed like pack one inside of tier two. And I was definitely, definitely dishing out substantial damage to our bounty contract inside of tier two. I don't know why <laughs> he spawned up there. We had to wait for him to run down the stairs. It was kind of funny watching him, you know, spawn up there, open the door, run down the stairs, <laughs> made me chuckle. But definitely easy, easy work of that bounty contract inside of tier two. I mean, the zombies obviously are not much of an issue at all uh, inside of tier two being pack one. Just, I mean, you can see on screen, they just, they're not an issue at all for zombies. Check the loot, get another perk that I needed. So we're doing really well for perks right now. So at this point I was like, okay, so we handled the tier two bounty contract at pack one fairly easily. So let's go visit pack a punch inside of tier two, increase the damage output on this LMG one more time and go off and grab ourselves our final bounty contract that we're going to be doing inside of tier two today and see how well this LMG performs on a bounty contract now that we are now pack a punch level two with legendary and an ammo mod on this LMG and we got a disciple and if you've been following the channel you know I do not like disciples however having said that this weapon performed extremely well against this disciple inside of tier 2 you can see just how much of a non-issue it was to deal with that bounty contract being a disciple inside of tier 2 I was really excited to push forward at this point i wanted to check the loot and i was kind of eager to get into tier three we were also under 15 minutes to go in the match so i definitely wanted to get into tier three and kind of see what this lmg can do um you know after a quick stop at the wonder fizz machine to grab the last perk that i needed i managed as i managed to grab a ton of perks on my way into tier three today with the contract so that was awesome to see we got the last perk i needed which was uh depth perception and then it was time to wander off and see how this weapon performs in tied to tier 3. Time to wander off and see if we can recoup the PAP 3 crystal and legendary tool I brought in for this run. But alas, the rituals had been taken. No big surprise, about 14 minutes to go in the match. There was a bunch of people inside of tier 3 for the majority of the game. I think a team of 6 went into one of the dark ethers and another team of 3 went into another dark ether. So by the time I got in here, there wasn't many players left and there really wasn't much left in the way of contracts. But I did want to take this opportunity to show you, <coughs> excuse me, just how awesome this LMG is inside of tier two, being only pack a punch level two against the zombies. You got an armored one right there, and you can see just how well it handles crowd control. Being pack a punch level two, not much of an issue at all. So I wanted to do a little bit more extensive testing. There wasn't much in the way of crowd control right there. So I rounded up a large herd of zombies here inside of tier three. And I wanted to show you how well this weapon handles crowd control at Pack-a-Punch level two. Now I did find, um, again with this one, that I found that Tack Stance, uh, like my last video uh, review, seems to be the way to go with this LMG. Uh, it definitely helped uh, keep the shots at that critical uh, level, so I was able to get a lot more critical shots using Tack Stance. Now again, I am a mouse and keyboard player, so I cannot spam the ADS for Deadshot to get my shots to ADS to the head of zombies. Now, right here with that down is an opportunity. I wanted to show this and not kind of hide it from you, but to let you know that there is a downside to the LMGs if you do not have mags of holding on as you do have to reload. And that right there is the reason why I took that down. Um, when I tried to sprint away, I had my LMG in my hand and it tried to reload. And the reload speed on LMGs is very slow, so it does take a long time. So there is the downside to the LMGs um, in Modern Warfare 3 Zombies is definitely the reload speed on LMGs is very slow. But you can see how well we took out just a standard HPT Mimic inside of Tier 3 without much issue at all. Definitely wasn't uh, struggling to take out that Mimic or any of the other crowd control. Check the loot chest right there. Got a nice self-revive out of there, which replaced the one I had just used. So that was nice to see. 
But again, this is just an opportunity to show you guys just how viable this weapon is. We're now Pack-A-Punch level 3. You can see how well it handles just about everything inside of Tier 3. The crowd control, congestion, the armored zombies. We've got sprinters coming at us, the transit sprinters. And this LMG just makes fairly easy work of just about everything inside of Tier 3. You've got a ton of ammo as it is an LMG. And the damage output is definitely substantial on this weapon so if you like having a ton of ammo in your guns and you feel like you have um, you know a mags of holding to use i definitely would recommend mags of holding on lmgs just to prevent um something that could happen a bad situation you could get yourself into while reloading an lmg as you can see it does take quite a minute to get the reload in um it's not too bad considering you know we are reloading 200 rounds so it wasn't too bad Here's another standard HVT inside a tier 3, a mangler, and again, you can see i just not struggling to deal with the mangler, the zombies in the area, just not much of an issue at all. I wanted to show you this, there wasn't really a crowd control in here per se, but it just, I felt like this was a good opportunity for you all to see just how well um, this weapon performs, just dealing with standard tier 3 congestion, standard tier 3 zombies. So seeing how it was doing so far in this run, what was left to do? We had to go visit George, the Guardian of the Arches, and see how he was going to react to this LMG, see how it performs against uh, Mega Abomination inside of Tier 3. And I mean, you can see, we definitely are able to dish out substantial damage when you hit the critical shots with this LMG. Um, George was just, I don't know what was going on with him today. I tell you, uh, stick through, because at one point, George flies. Yes, that's right. Mega Abomination flies. Uh, I was a little uh, stunned and didn't really feel comfortable in that situation, seeing a Mega Abomination fly. Um, also, I was unable to pick up the loot from George today because he died in one of the strangest places I have ever seen a Mega Abomination die inside of my Modern Warfare 3 Zombies game. So let me know if you've had that happen to you um, and when we get there. <laughs> But here we are dealing with the crowd control um, so that I can focus in my fire on George. I step back in the corner here. Apparently the zombies don't like where I'm standing. They started to throw meat at me. Um, not sure why that is, but it's just this spot here, like I've told you before, with this path, if you've got nothing coming in from behind you, you can uh, force George to engage and disengage you, which can be really nice and helpful for trying to deal with... You know George in this contract in this situation so here we are I moved myself over to the patio area where uh, George likes to fire up his laser attack at me and we were able to dish out a ton of damage you can see the damage we were able to dish out on the critical shots there it was just truly remarkable um, so it was time to just kind of reposition myself to get in that George flew what no bueno I was not okay with that like what the hell is that since when do Mega Abominations start flying? Like, I know Black Ops 6 is around the corner, and we've got parasites, and we've got spiders that can evolve and, and start flying and stuff like that, but this isn't Black Ops 6. Most of our enemies are supposed to be on the ground, save for the Disciple, who's just slightly in the air. I'm not okay with Mega Abominations flying. I can tell you that right now. Oh my goodness, what the heck happened there? But George here is definitely not interested in engaging with me while I'm up here at these uh, picnic tables, which I find interesting. So I've been using this spot a lot recently to try and finish off George or bounty contracts in the area as they just don't seem to be able to come up to where these picnic tables are. So I figured, you know, show you the entirety of the fight with George so that you guys have a really good feel for how this weapon performs inside of our zombies game mode. Um, how this weapon performs as far as movement, as far as damage, uh, just whether or not it's going to be a viable option for you. Trying to show you this weapon in as many different, you know, positions as possible. And here, what the heck, George? You went inside the stairs. Like, what was going on? He just casually walked right through the stairs. And then I finished off George right there, and the loot was inside the stairs. Um... Yeah, so I was able, unable to pick up any loot from George today, which was strange. And then I wanted to show you guys a bounty contract inside of Tier 3. But unfortunately, with two and a half minutes to go in the match before the storm started to move, there was no bounty contracts on the map. So I figured, you know what, we will grab a contract. We'll grab the raid weapon stash, and I will show you guys how this weapon performs doing the raid weapon stash inside of Tier 3. 
Now, there is a couple things that this weapon excels at. Um, I feel like the LMG class uh, excels at dishing out damage. They, they usually are fairly heavy hitter um, weapons, the LMGs. You usually have an absolute boatload of ammunition to shoot, which is absolutely awesome. Um, one of the downsides I did notice while doing this raid weapon stash, and you will see it a few times, is during the reload, I've had to, uh, you know, reposition, kind of jump out and uh, run back around and get back into the raid weapon stash in order to deal with the reload on this LMG. Um, I just wanted to point that out. It, it was the reload that was forcing me into these situations. If I had equipped mags of holding, I definitely feel like this would have been um, a lot easier um to deal with i would have had to stay i would have been able to stay in position and just uh dish out the bullets to the enemies and the zombies that are coming my way but because i didn't have mags of holding uh, to use for this run today the reload on the lmgs um is definitely one of the downsides to them for sure um which i w which is why i feel like a lot of us in the zombies who play um gravitate more towards you know assault rifles smgs um fully automatic pistols uh things that allow us to reload really quickly and uh shoot a ton of uh bullets and dish out the damage in a hurry um tier three is is ramped up you know the speed of everything inside of tier three is at its maximum so the zombies are moving very quickly. Uh, they're very strong. Uh, so I feel like um, the LMGs are a viable option. Again, like I'm going to recommend it a bunch of times. Make sure you've got a mags holding to use. So you just can avoid the reloading situations that I was getting myself into while trying to complete this raid weapon stash. Wasn't having much of a struggle um, dealing with the, the crowd's inside of tier three you know you can hop out the windows of the raid weapon stash you can reposition yourself so that you don't have to worry about you know taking that down like i've done now for my second time during this raid weapon stash we've got our uh, mega abomination in the area he's eager to laser me um he's been firing up his laser a lot as i come out here to grab decoys so that i can get back into my raid weapon stash um because i pop out all the zombies of course pop out after me and they're coming into the entrance so i like to kind of just use decoys to kind of maneuver around um the crowd control and put them in positions uh so that i can complete my contracts uh so that's usually just something i like to do i run a lot i use a lot of decoys when i run inside of tier three that's for sure what is your favorite tactical inside of zombies for mw3 to use for me it is 100 percent decoys unless i'm off in the dark ether then i will grab casimirs so we finished off the raid weapon stash got a self revive and a sigil out of that deal uh seeing how the reload was on this i did not feel comfortable heading off into the dark ether with this weapon um you guys can let me know if you've used the lmgs in the dark ether how uh, viable they are but myself i just didn't feel comfortable with it having the issues i had with the reload and um with the limited time i was able to spend inside of tier three i didn't have, uh, have time to grab enough cash that i wanted but we managed to exfil barely again in the storm i didn't know if i was even going to make it to this one for sure mega abomination or <laughs> the mangler climbed on top of the helicopter and then the blades killed him i i i and a zombie fallen i'm not sure what was happening at xville today holy smokes but overall definitely a viable option to be using inside of our zombies game modes um aside from the downside with the reload speed so if you got mags of holding i definitely would say go ahead and give the 556 icarus lmg from mw2 a shot inside of your zombies game mode and see how you feel about it now this is the build that i used on the 556 icarus for today's run so let's work down below in the comment section as there's always room to move on my builds to change it up for speed and mobility so if you want to make those changes like i said let's work in the comment section together so we all have an amazing build to run on the 556 icarus inside of our zombies game mode and the camel that i was running today is found under the butterfly section and it is the imago i hope i said that right thanks so much for tuning in